So again, thank you everyone for being here. Um, Ms. Acosta is with me and she'll be helping me, um, especially with the Q&A and ma managing um, participants. So thank you, Ms. Acosta. Hi everyone, happy to be here. Okay. Do you think we're ready, Ms. Acosta? Yeah, I think we can begin. It looks like the folks that were going to come in at the beginning have come in, but people can still join us even if they're a little late. Okay, perfect. So again, welcome and thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm Ms. Alcaraz. I'm the high school placement counselor. I'm sure most of you have spoken to me or um, we have met over Zoom. And then Ms. Acosta is here as well. Hi, everyone. I'm fellow eighth grade parent going through the same as everybody on this call. <laughs> and uh, the director of development for the school. I'm really happy to be here to support Ms. Alcaraz. OK, so first, oh. first, I definitely want to reflect on this year's admissions process and just recognize and name that it has been a difficult year um, throughout this process. It's definitely, definitely not what I don't think any of us envisioned. Um, so I do want to name that, you know, remote work is still new. It's still challenging. And especially going through this high school admissions process at home, I'm sure is, um, you know, has its up and ups and downs. Um, but thank you so much for your continued patience and collaboration, um, supporting your children and um, communicating with me as well. So I'm excited to talk about all the new changes this year. And of course, if you have any questions, please go ahead and put them in the Q&A or in the chat and um, we'll answer them at the end. So again, just an overview of the high school process. It is a collaborative process. Um, as you have seen, I've been sending home uh, newsletters, week weekly newsletters or emails on any updates that I receive or online flyers like the one that you got for this webinar. Um, so through those uh, communications, you'll see that I try to list as many open houses that I can. Um, any virtual school tours that are going on, um, test dates, audition dates. Um, in the newsletters, I do highlight a school just to give families an idea of what schools are out there. Um, and then we also try to update the high school webpage as much as we can. And the New York City DOE high school website is also a great resource to use if you do need more information. So a quick review on the pathways of high school admission. So there is, there are two pathways. There is a required high school application that all students have to complete. This is, this application will open next week at some point. Um, but this is where you create that list of 12 high school choices and then um, list them in preference order on the application. That leads to only one high school offer at the end, and then you can move on to wait list, which we'll um, cover at the end of the presentation. The, another pathway that is an option is the SHSAT pathway or the LaGuardia audition pathway. So for the SHSAT, there are eight testing schools. You have to register and take the test, and then you receive one offer from there. You, you may receive one offer from there. And then for the LaGuardia auditions, um, you have to register an audition and you can receive up to one offer or as many um, programs in which you auditioned for. I believe there are six, so you can receive up to one or six um, offers. So in total, if a student takes advantage of all of these opportunities, then they can um, possibly get up to eight offers. But if a student just wants to do the um, the public high school application, they will only get one offer. Other options other than public high schools are charter high schools, private schools, and Catholic schools. So if you're interested in any of those other types of schools, please let me know and I'll definitely help you with that. 
And then on the bottom, you'll see on the right hand side, all of the um, SHSAT schools listed plus the LaGuardia school separately on the bottom. Okay, so to begin the process, we um, need to create a My Schools account. This account is very, very important. Um, this account is the account you'll use to look up high schools and save them to your account. So right now, since the only um, application that is open is the SHSAT application and LaGuardia application, then right now you can only favorite and save those programs. But once the high school application opens for all schools, then you'll be able to go into your account and save specific programs that you're interested in. And then that makes it easier for you to find those programs when you're applying to, your, um, to all of those schools on your application. Right now with the My Schools account, you can register for the SHSAT and the LaGuardia audition. This account is also what you'll be using to see your results when they come out and see the waitlist options over the summer. So this is where it's gonna um, be most important because you'll need access over the summer if you are interested in waitlist, which again, we'll talk about at the end. So what you will need is the account creation code. This was sent to you from the DOE to your mailing address, but if you don't have it, let me know and I can go ahead and send that to you. You'll need your student's ID number and then a working email address that you check regularly. The way you're going to do this is go ahead and go into myschools.nyc and Ms. Acosta is going to put that link in the chat. Um, you're going to click on get started. It'll take you step by step. Uh, I will send you an email verification to the email address that you provide to make sure it's a working email address. And then you can go into your dashboard after you log in and add your student I, um, add your student using the ID and the um, account creation code. Perfect. Okay. Now after you have created your account, you can search for my school. Uh, you can search for schools on the my school high um, online directory. So you don't necessarily need an account to search on the online high school directory, but again, it can be helpful because you're able to favorite or save programs that you like to your profile. Um, the online high school directory, whether you're, whether you're logged in or not logged in, can be found on the bottom of the page once you go to my schools or on your account. And then you're going to click on that. You're gonna click on high schools because you are searching for high schools. And now you can search for high schools based on the high school name or your own address or other filters that are there. Um, some important information to look for is, you know, the location, are they gonna make it in time? And something that's helpful is on my schools, when you look at the map, there is a directions button. So you can actually go in there and see how far it is from your house or what trains or buses you may have to take. Um, also the size of the school, the sports, academics, the programs that they have and graduation and safety rates are all important. We want those rates to be around 80% or higher. And again, there are 12 spots on the application and we do recommend to fill out all 12 spots if you want your child to you know, attend a school that they're interested in, but also um, some families don't want their children to go to a zone school. So if you would um, like for them to not go to a zone school, I definitely recommend using all 12 opportunities for that. If you choose more than uh, one program at one school, um, then that's gonna be more than one spot on the application. So for example, Long Island City High School, um, they have, I think, up to like six programs. So if you want to apply to three of those, then that will be three spots on the application. And then just talking about schools, um, I do want to point out that, actually, I'm going to hold off on this. I'll, I'll cover it a bit later. Sorry. <laughs> okay. 
So here is an example of what you might see when you're on my schools. At, at the top here, you're going to see the search bar. You're going to see that you can use these filters here. Um, there's more filters if you click on this. Um, but it, this is very helpful if you're starting to look for schools. Um, you, this is what you might see here on the left the size the, of the school, the time, the overview, um, maybe the buses and the subways that go there. And then here on the right, you'll see um, information that you can click on for their academics, for the graduation and safety rates, um, and then the programs that they have here at the bottom. So this star here on the left of the title is what I mean that you can click um, to save that program to your My Schools account once the application is open, which it will be sometime next week. And then a quick review on the admissions method, since this information is now out of date because there have been some updates, I'm not gonna really go over it, but I just wanted to show you the different admissions methods. Um, there's the testing admissions, which only looks at the score of the SHSAT. There's the auditions, the screens, which the screen do look at academics. There's the educational option. Um, then we have screen language where these programs do require you speak um, a specific home language or perhaps um, that you're an ELL student. Um, we don't need to worry about transfer admissions. And then we have zoned, which is dependent on where you live and your address. And then we have the open admissions which is um, the admissions method that's like a lottery. They don't look at any background information. So the admissions for 2021, um, I'm gonna start with the SHSAT admissions and the LaGuardia auditions. So for both of these students will register online through their My Schools account or through the school counselor. I know there have been some issues with the website. So if you are having issues, please let me know. The deadline is this Friday um, on the 15th. And the new thing about this is that you can now um, list all of the SHSAT schools by preference um, in order of preference. Uh, when you register. So before it was you had to bubble in this information on site on the test ticket or on the test. Now you're doing it all online when you register. Um, you, you will also select what days your child can or cannot test. So it's going to either be on a Saturday or a Sunday, but if you have something coming up or um, for religious reasons that your child cannot test on a Saturday or Sunday, that's gonna be an option for you. And if you ask me to register you um, and you do have something on one of those days, please let me know so that we can update that for you. Okay, so testing accommodations for the SHSAT. Um, you know, if your child has an IP or a 504 or is, um, in ELL and they have those testing accommodations, then they are definitely entitled to testing accommodations for the SHSAT. So if you um, register them, then double check the receipt that's generated. And if anything is incorrect on there, please let me know. Um, when test tickets are available, you'll be able to download them from your My Schools account. Um, on those test tickets, you'll see the school order, so the order of preference, you'll see the date, the time, and the testing site. They will be in person, um, there's no virtual option, and they may require COVID testing. I think they were talking about that, and more information on that will definitely be coming. Um, and then again, on the ticket, you'll see accommodations if your child has any testing accommodations. The test will take place either the last weekend in January or first week, first weekend of February. So um, some admissions method, sorry, this is my, okay, great. So um, the My Schools directory, some admissions methods will take into consideration their sixth grade final grades, their first marking period seventh grade grades, and their sixth grade state or their sixth grade state test scores. 
So there's going to be no seventh grade attendance taken into consideration and no seventh grade state test scores because they didn't take the test. So each school, each screened program is going to um, have their own individual plan or requirements that are coming in mid January. So right now schools are coming up with a plan on what they will be looking at, what grades, or if they're gonna be looking at the state test scores or not. And in mid January, everything should be uploaded and updated on the My Schools account. So for admissions method, for the screened admissions, um, again, they're gonna either look at sixth grade grades, marking period number one for seventh grade grades, and or sixth grade test scores, each school will be different. Um, and then some like Beacon or Bard normally have additional requirements like portfolios or assessments or interviews. So those still may, may be still taking place. Um, again, we just don't know the finalized plans for each school until they're uploaded in my schools and that should be coming in mid January. For audition programs, they will be all they will be virtual, all of them will be virtual. No academics will be taken into consideration. Um, you will be uploading an audition video by sending it into um, this email that I will provide. I believe it's on the next slide. And students will then be ranked based on priority, admissions priority, and their video submission. So the criteria that the school has um, for the video submission. The only audition program that will be looking at um, grades will be LaGuardia. So they will be looking at academics. Um, for educational option, so this is where students are going to get a composite score based on their average. So the average of the final sixth grade grades or the average of the first marking period seventh grade grades and the standard test scores from sixth grade. So each school again is going to be submitting their plan. This should be updated within the next couple weeks. Based on the scores that they're given, um, they're going to be placed in the high, middle, or low category, and then offers will be given randomly to one third of students in each category. So that's how the ed opt option is working this year. You don't need to um, do any extra steps besides put them on the application. Um, so that that part is still staying the same, but that's a little breakdown of how the ed opt option is going to work. And then zone admissions, your student always has a spot at their zoned program. So that doesn't change. Normally that's Bryant or LIC. Um, and then open admissions, that's already random, that's staying the same. And then screened language admissions, that again, you there are some requirements based on home language or um, ELL status. Um, there are some changes, some admission updates this year, and there's going to be some changes to priority groups. So um, here on the right, you can see like a description here about um, eligibility. So this normally shows which student can and cannot apply to that program. So what is being eliminated this year is the eligibility based on district and catchment areas. So what is not changing this year is eligibility based on boroughs or other factors. So for example, here you see open only to Brooklyn students or residents where before you might have seen open to district, um, district 32 students. So now you only see the boroughs. Next year, they will be getting rid of this completely just to help with diversity in admissions. Priority groups, there's also a change to the priority groups. So normally priority groups show what students are considered for an offer and in what order. Um, it's different for every program. So what is eliminated this year is the eligibility based on district and catchment areas. Um, no change would be based on boroughs or other factors. So here on the right, again, you see 
the priority group, the first is priority to Manhattan students and then New York City residents. Whereas before in the first um, number, you would see priority to district three and then second priority group would be priority to Manhattan and then third would be priority to New York City. So they did get rid of the districts. And again, next year, um, there will be no, um, it'll be open to all New York City residents. They will be getting rid of the borough um, restrictions as well. Okay, so diversity in admissions. So this is an initiative to give low income students more access to high school opportunities. You can find DIA schools by going onto the My Schools online directory and using the filter that you see here on the right. Um, students whose family income level is below the federal free lunch threshold receive admissions priority for any DIA program that gives priority student that gives priority to applicants eligible, eligible for free or reduced lunch or free lunch based on income. So again, this is from the federal free lunch threshold. If you feel like your family might qualify or they do qualify, then you must submit um, a family income inquiry form to this myschoolapps.com website. If you're eligible, but you don't submit the form, then you're not going to be taken into consideration for this initiative. So you um, just make sure you submit that form. If you need any help or have questions, please let me know. And I'd just like to add, so that myschoolsapps.com uh, family income inquiry form, that's the old lunch form. So it used to be you fill that out for lunch and then they create, when they went online, they changed the name of it. Um, and I've shared that a lot of different times in different communications and it's also linked um, on the homepage of our website, but you can reach out to either of us if you need that link. Perfect, thank you. Okay, now that we've talked about admissions and what it's gonna look like this year, again, I know I went through it a little bit quick, um, so I'll definitely be happy to answer all of the questions at the end, but I do want to talk about the balanced application. So in the end, we do want to see a balanced application for our students to ensure that they get into a high school um, that they want to go to, right? So on the application, only put schools that your child is interested in, but also put different admissions methods. So a reach admissions method, you can think of um, like a, a screened admissions method. So like BARD, Beacon, Academy of American Studies, Columbia Secondary, those are schools that are in high demand. So what that means is that there's 10 or more applicants per, per seat for that school. Um, another reach program is one that you are not in the first priority group for or one that um, a student may not meet all the academic requirements for. So the, that's what a REACH uh, school or program would fall under. And then we have target. So that means that the demand is about four to nine applicants per seat, or you're in the first priority group. So for a, a school that only admits um, first priority is queen students, then that would be a target school for you. And then, um, another, re, uh, your academics are in the middle of the ranges. So sometimes schools will have a range of scores that they're looking for of grades. So if your child has a score an average in the middle, then that's gonna be a target program for them. And then a likely program. So this is a program that's lower in demand, three or fewer students per app, uh, applicants per seat, and you're in the first priority group or the admissions method does not use academics, so like an open admissions method, or your child is on the higher um, end of the ranges of what's required. So we definitely want to see just a balanced application. Make sure you rank your schools in true order of preference. This is because um, when the DOE gets the application, they always try to match students to the first choice. So if that first choice is no longer available and they don't have any more seats, then they're going to go to the second choice. Um, if that is all taken up, then they'll go to the third and so on until they get a match. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that your list is going in true order of preference. And something that I wanted to point out, which I kind of touched on earlier, was that it is possible that 
we work really hard on the application and you have a balanced application. And in the end, the DOE will place you at your zone school or give you a school that was not on your application, but it's around your um, home address. So that is rare, but it can happen. And in that situation, you know, we definitely work together to try to find other options for you if you're not happy with that or um, get you on the wait list, which I will um, explain in a bit. Ms. Alcaraz, we actually have a question that I thought um, is a little relevant to what you were, we have a few questions that are come in, but this one uh, specifically, sure. uh, it's a little bit long, but I think uh, it's a really interesting scenario. So the parent wants to know, what if when completing an application for a school that I, over, that I the parent, the student overlooked the eligibility requirements. Will the application go through or is it flagged that by the my school system? Are they notified about being not eligible for that program? They just want to make sure that they're not going to submit an application and have a school on their application that they're they, they don't qualify for. So the only time a application has been flagged is when someone has applied to a program where it's only available to 10th graders. Um, there is a program at Queens Tech that only 10th graders can apply to. And if that happens, then I do get a message from the DOE saying, um, these students applied to programs that were only available for 10th graders. Um, would you like to make changes? Um, so that's the only time if you apply to a program where maybe um, you don't meet all the academic requirements or maybe it was um, priority group to Manhattan instead of Queens, it will not be flagged because you can still apply to those schools. Um, even if it's uh, you have to live in Brooklyn and you don't because of the priority. So let's say it's priority to Brooklyn and then New York City because it's open to all of New York City, it won't be flagged. Does that make sense? So um, I guess then uh, for our families to ensure that they are not putting a school on their application, that they're not in that priority group, um, what can they do to make sure that they're, they're when they go through those steps that they're, they're putting schools on the list that are um, they're eligible for and, and uh, there's, their student will actually be considered for. So that's when it's gonna be really important to look at the priority groups when you're looking at the school in the My Schools online directory. Um, also looking at the eligibility description. Um, that's where it's gonna be really, really important. Of course, you can always try if it's a program that you're really, really interested in, you can always go ahead and try and put in an application and maybe um, you will be placed there. But um, I would definitely say to make sure that you're just double checking um, all of the requirements when looking up schools on the My Schools website. And if, again, if anyone needs to make an appointment or has questions, um, after this presentation, I'm always happy to answer those. Okay, great. So I'll continue. Um, so just looking at the timeline right now, before the application opens next week, what should family do, families do? So families should create their My Schools accounts. Again, this is really important stuff. Um, you should be exploring schools and programs through the online high school directory. You should have a list of at least 12 schools so that when the time comes, you know uh, what schools you want in the application. You should be attending virtual events um, and prepare for auditions. After the application opens next week, um, you can now add programs to the profile under the favorites, which is what I was talking about with the star on the left-hand side of the title of the program. Um, you can add programs to the application and arrange them in preference order. You can submit the application early or when it's due. The last day to change anything on the application is gonna be the 23rd of February. So that um, to me is the due date. So the 23rd of February. Um, if there are emergencies after that date, I as a staff member um, have 
about a week after that to make any changes, but for parents and families, that's going to be the last day to make any changes. The offers will be released in late spring, then the waitlist will open after that, and then in late fall, the waitlist will close. So a little bit about waitlists. Um, so waitlists give, give students an opportunity to be admitted to a different school of their choice. So sometimes what happens is we have the list of schools on the application and then later on, maybe something changes and a student um, isn't happy with the school where they were placed. So that's where waitlist gives them an option or an opportunity to go to a different school. So the way that this works is that the students will be placed on all wait lists above their placement on their application. So for example, if a student was placed in the fifth choice school on their application, then they will automatically be placed on the wait list for schools one through four. Um, students can accept or deny wait list offers. They can also, which I don't think it's on the slide, but they can also add themselves manually to other wait lists that they were not automatically added to. Um, so that can be like, for example, their 10th choice on their application. They're not gonna be automatically added, but they can manually add themselves. And of course, schools are gonna go um, in wait list order based on ranks and um, priority groups. Um, once a student accepts a waitlist offer, they can no longer retract their acceptance. So once they leave a seat at a school, they cannot go back to that school. And just keeping this in mind that last year or the year before, they, they did say there were no appeals. So that means that you're not able to go to the DOE office and um, appeal your your offer. I'm sure with COVID there, um, you know, there were some changes with all of that, but more information is gonna come of what that will look like for this, this end of the year. And then just some quick announcements. Um, there are some virtual admission events beginning on the 14th and you can register at this link here. It's the schools.nyc.gov website. Um, there's also going to be some virtual art fairs beginning on the 21st. So if you're interested in art programs, you can uh, attend those. They're just going to go over again all the admissions, um, the processes, what to expect, and um, a lot of information. They're going to be there for questions as well. And then Energy Tech did send um, some new dates for their open house. Um, so I made sure to add those here. So I'll leave that up for a little bit. Um, but were there any questions, Ms. Acosta, that I could answer? Uh, yeah, we had a few. And one, actually, this is the perfect um, segue for this question. Um, thank you, Celia, for your question. So some schools have not posted any open house dates or any videos about their programs. Do you think that some schools will simply not provide any additional information than what's already been published online? Um, I do. I think that since it's up to every school and what they're going to do, um, some schools, you know, I'm, the DOE is encouraging all high schools um, to post something to give parents an opportunity to see if that school would be a good fit for their child. But I do think that some schools may not be able to or um, just may not post any videos about um, what their school has to offer. Um, and all they are showing is just what's on the website. Okay, we thank you. We have another question uh, from parent Lisa Castagna. Uh, will grow, this is about um, the new grading with the whole sixth grade and then the sixth grade test scores in the first mm -hmm. semester of seventh grade. Will growing up green create the composite score or does the high school you're applying to do they make that score up like where does that score come from and then like where does it live anywhere specific how does the new grading system at the new system that we started this past year how's how is that going to affect applications going forward so it's really a two-parter it's like where are they getting that information from and how does the high school see it first part and then the second part is 
we are now doing um, a slightly different grading system here at Growing Up Green and how will that affect um, applications going forward? Yeah, so let me just go back um, to these, these scores. So basically what's gonna happen is Growing Up Green will provide the DOE with the sixth grade grades, the final sixth grade grades, the first marking period of seventh grade and the sixth grade state test scores, which you should actually already see the, those state test scores in your My Schools account. Um, but then after that, because every school has their own plan, um, they are going to be coming up with those composite scores on their own. And then they will be um, ranking students based on those and selecting them randomly for admissions. Um, so to answer the first part, it's going to be the high school that's coming up with those scores. And then, I'm sorry, can you repeat the second part? That's okay. The second part of the question was um, the new grading system that was rolled out this fall um, for the middle school. How will that affect growing up green applications going into the future? Um, so this year, it won't affect students because they're not looking at eighth grade grades. Um, the only process that did look at eighth grade grades was the Catholic high school admissions process. Um, for the future, if let's say your student is in ninth grade and wants to go through this entire admissions process again for a 10th grade seat somewhere else, then Growing Up Green can definitely work with you to come up with those scores needed um, because there is like a, there is a conversion chart, chart that we use and there is information that we use that will convert those scores into the, the number of scores that are needed for high school admission. Thank you. Okay, moving on to a slightly different topic. This is about the specialized um, high school test. Uh, a parent, Sheila, uh, she applied and signed up for the test, but did not see the option for preferred dates. So if they were given a date, is there a way they can change that test date? Yes, so I can go ahead if you um, send me an email, I can go ahead and update any information that was um, that's in the account with the SHSAT um, test information. I can go ahead and see if I can make any changes. And if not, then we can always try to email the enrollment office as well. Okay, thank you. Um, so the application, we're waiting for it to open. Um, and just uh, FYI to all our, our middle school families here, um, the middle school application for the DOE was supposed to open this week. So uh, current fourth and fifth graders were supposed to be able to do their middle school applications across the city. And that has been delayed. It is not open yet. So just be aware that there is a backup in the system. We're hoping that the high school application will open next week. But all of those dates and deadlines that the city has been sharing may yet be pushed back again. Having said that, um, Rebecca asks, will we have a better chance of getting into a school if we submit the application earlier than the due date? Um, no, so all applications um, after the deadline, that's when they will start to view, when the DOE will start to view applications. High schools cannot see you know, any applications. Um, it's just the DOE office. So once the deadline has passed and um, the final application deadline has passed, because I uh, mentioned I do have a little, maybe a week more than families do to make any changes, then after that is when the um, process will start with placing students in schools. Uh, and then we have another question about the uh, virtual tour. Um, Antonella would like to know if we can, I've been posting links in the chat for everyone. Um, I don't have the link. There was um, on one of the screens, the link to the virtual tours. Are you able to share that? Um, this one? Uh, that one I shared. Oh, I did share that one there. So that one is in the chat, everyone. It's the um, enroll, let me see if I can re 
share this with everyone. Yes, it's also on the um, schools.nyc.gov website um, in the enrollment section in the high school section. But if you can't share it, I can try to share it as well. Okay, um, Antonelle is thinking that there might be a different link to the actual tours. Um, so this is going to, when you click on this, it'll be the newyorkcity.gov page, the high school page. You do have to scroll down a bit and it'll say something like virtual events. And then it'll have like a link, like register here for virtual events. And it'll take you to another page where um, you can register for a date. Okay, I just found that I followed your instructions. So I'm going to put that. Let's see if people can see it. This is a really long. Yeah, it was very um, long. So I um, it's a form. That's why it's a link to a form. Yeah, I hope people can see that. I'm uh, looking it. Oh, great. Antonella said that works. Super. Okay, perfect. Um, did anyone else have any other questions? There are no more questions in the chat and there's no more questions in the Q&A. It is easier for me to see your questions in the Q&A if you would like to use that tool to submit a question. But either works. And then let me just pull up my um, contact information in case anybody needs this. Um, again, I know it can be a stressful process and be very overwhelming. So if you ever need to set up an appointment or a phone call or a Zoom meeting or maybe text or email works best, just let me know and I'm definitely here to support um, families. Well, it looks like that's it. We don't have any more questions in either the, the Q&A or the chat. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to stop recording.